Let's talk today about why my enemies don't shoot back. You know, this is one of my favorite series to do, and it actually started as a joke for the people that love to say that streamers only get bot lobbies. But what it's turned into is a great opportunity for me to coach you and give you tips on sweaty lobbies. So today we're going to be breaking down this game right here. 17 kills in a 1.26 average KD lobby, but this game's a little bit different than most. This is going to be a very slow and strategic type game. The reason for that is I'm fighting half of this game without plates or with low plates or with no extra plates. So I have to be more strategic about how I'm approaching situations and the fights that I'm picking, which is why I only get 17 kills. We're going to have a slow early game, and then we're actually going to pick up some kills later game, which I also want you to learn from in the sense that just because you don't get off to a good start doesn't mean you can't finish strong and still drop 20 kills. I'm in a position this game to drop 20. We just come up a little bit short. So right here, we're actually in a good spot. We do have full plates, but we don't have any extra, and I really want to pay attention to how that affects the fights that I choose and how I go about approaching situations based on how many plates that I have. I actually have to buy plates this game, which is something that I never do. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to get load out here. and We're going to start to figure out where people are. Now, we don't exactly know where anybody is at this point. We don't have enough money for a UAV, so we can't figure out kind of where everybody is around the map and figure out where those hot areas or also figure out where those free kills are. I always talk about picking up free kills in terms of anticipating and hitting shots, being able to, you know, isolate somebody from their squad which makes it a little bit easier now we get a guy right there so we're gonna go ahead and push up and then we're gonna push down here and we're gonna anticipate around these corners don't really hear him i challenge that way don't see anything don't see anything that way so we're gonna go ahead and push around we use just a little bit of basic movement here just a little bit of strafing as i'm shooting and notice that i'm able to avoid a few bullets we take a little bit less damage at the very least if you don't have great movement that's fine work on your slide canceling most importantly strafe while shooting that will allow you to take less damage in gunfights allow you to avoid some bullets so right here again no extra plates right where we don't have any extras to spare which ends up costing us a few kills here because i can't push in now i see some people over this way i'm kind of third partying this fight this is where we start talking about positioning and game strategy i don't need to full send this in just yet well i go to and then i get shot from the left so now we're in a little bit of a weird spot but right here i've still got a lot of cover with the rocks so i'm gonna go ahead and see what i can find by the way i'm using the m4 which is it's okay it is it feels like a hit marker machine in the fact that i break a lot of people and i'm not able to get a lot of downs with it unfortunately so we're gonna go ahead tag him a little bit right there and right as he kind of re-peaks this left side is when I realized I'm in a bad spot. And I also actually calmed to my teammate. I said, hey, TCAP, can you look over me? Because he was somewhere close by. And he ends up going down. He actually said, I'm dead. So that's when I go ahead and I pull back from this situation and just get out. Look, I have no plates. I am at a significant disadvantage here. So we're going to go ahead and pull back and reposition. Try to find plates if we can. We've got three kills. We've got seven other teams. And look, it is okay to go ahead and disengage from a fight when you don't have plates. It's super unfortunate. It's a little bit of the state of rebirth right now in the sense that I myself have been struggling to find plates anywhere. A lot of times when I'm in gunfights, the people that I'm killing don't have plates. I don't find plates on the ground. It really depends lobby by lobby. We're going to go ahead and push back here and end up going to buy some plates and then challenging somebody else. So as I'm pushing over this way, still seven other teams, still three kills. And I actually caught one right in the window there. I'm going to go ahead and pull back here just so you can see it. You'll catch him right in this left window real quick right there so you catch him right in this window at which point i know he's here so i've got to be careful about how i challenge this as i'm pushing up you catch kind of him pushed out the window a little bit so i'm trying to challenge and i'm trying to be smart about how i do here because i need to catch him off guard to create that window of opportunity knowing that i'm down 100 health right each plate is 50 health so i've got to create that window of opportunity there we get a little bit of a team shot with uh my teammate and we're able to get that kill now right here notice that i am full plates but I don't have any extra split decision here. Do you buy plates or do you buy a UAV? I actually buy a UAV here. Why? I have a little bit more confidence when I know where people are. So the plates would have helped, but I wanted to get that information so that I can keep challenging people and hopefully get a clean kill, at which point I'll have more plates and we'll keep rocking and rolling. That unfortunately doesn't happen. I'm going to push up here. Watch the centering around the corner. Notice I'm pre-centering. I'm pre-anticipating this guy around this corner, and my crosshairs are centered even before. Again, notice the strafing while shooting there allows me to avoid some bullets. Once again, just no plates on the ground. I only have two plates right here, so we're going to have to still be strategic about what the fights that I'm approaching, but we do have a UAV up, which is an advantage because I can actually see where people are, right? I know where the hot area is. 
I know that this guy is kind of down below on the scaffolding to the left. I know that this guy's flying in. So I have a lot of information about people being over here and I can third party this using my AR. I have a self revive, right? So if I go down, nobody's gonna be able to thirst me unless they have a precision or a cluster. So I'm still in an okay spot. So I'm still challenging people even though I have no plates. I'm just not being as aggressive as I would be. I'm not playing as much with my SMG. I'm gonna be playing with my AR. Now th he throws the heli. I take a little bit of damage there from him shooting me and I'm gonna go ahead and try to challenge to see what I can find. Still down to a plate and a half, so gotta be strategic. There's a plate right there. So we're gonna go ahead, throw that in. Yep, so we at least are in a spot to challenge. And look, as you get more confident in your aim and movement, you'll be able to challenge in this situation. I'm confident that I can still win a gunfight here, but I have to be strategic. He hits me with the snapshot, that's fine. Try to see what I can find. There's no buy station over there, so I unfortunately can't really, you know, buy plates over that direction and then push back in. So we're gonna go ahead and reposition this way. Now let's talk about this. We're down to literally a bullet. Literally, look at my health. My health is a bullet. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna stim, and we're gonna push up. We're gonna throw this plate in, and then I'm gonna go ahead and immediately re-challenge this. I'm gonna take advantage of this guy, and you're gonna see that he doesn't anticipate me, which is why I'm able to get the kill. This is why you always have to anticipate around every single corner and not just chase people. So challenge around the corner. Notice he's caught in a tax sprint. He gets his camera broken there. Boom, he's broken, I'm broken. I have the advantage mixing in a few headshots right there, and that's how I'm able to get the kill. So when we see that full speed, right, Watch how quick this happens. And I decide to re-challenge this and play a little bit aggressive. So we're going to go ahead and put the plate in. I hear him chasing. We re-challenge. Boom. I break his camera. We're able to get the down in the thirst. But only has one plate. So still fighting without plates here. Seven kills. Five other teams. And we just can't get in that groove. We can't get in that groove of having information and having plates. We're able to almost get the down right there. That's the M4 for you. Like I said, it's not the best option right now. If you didn't see my best ARs video, I'll go ahead and put that down in the comments below for you. And if you are looking to get better at Rebirth, just consider hitting that subscribe button down below. I should say if you are looking to get better at Resurgence now, because I am going to be doing content on this channel about Fortune's Keep, tip videos for Fortune's Keep, you know, updates about Fortune's Keep, any, everything that you need to know, best loadouts for Fortune's Keep, as well as Rebirth. So because both maps are going to be Resurgence-based, where we have that respawn dynamic, I'm going to be covering both maps with my usual content in terms of tip videos we're going to go ahead and kind of i'm going to say third party this but at the end of the day it's my own teammate so this guy's going to shoot my teammate i'm able to get the down right there we're able to get the thirst we once again get marked because of that uh i guess it's a crossbow the arrow still don't have any plates still only fighting with one plate here so we're gonna go ahead and start to figure out how we're getting plates again so i'm gonna go and push all the way back to grandma's house once again we're gonna be strategic we're not gonna put ourselves in bad situations where we're low health especially when you recognize or at least i recognize that this was a sweaty lobby between the players that were in it between the ttv clan tags you can kind of realize a sweaty lobby when you see it or you you can start to as you are in them more and more and you probably already can in terms of people just playing super sweaty so now right here we're finally in a little bit of a flow right we finally have plates we've still got loadout we have perks we have uav up and now we can kind of start to go challenge people and play a little bit more aggressive finally it took two whole circles to do it but we're finally able to go challenge now i catch this rose skin right here notice the movement there you know when we talk about why my enemies don't shoot back look at this movement right here right so we're gonna go ahead let's slow this down and just look at the back and forth how hard i am to track i jump right i strafe i jump peek left around that corner i strafe right that guy just has no chance right there one down below one up above me so i gotta be careful here once again plates go you know i'm down to i'm de i still have five so thankfully i have enough but an unfortunate situation where we're gonna burn some plates right there one down below me pushing up the stairwell so we're gonna go in and challenge and watch this play right here now i get caught in a weird spot because i can challenge right there but now i kind of i fall down so what are my options here well if i push left I have to play this heady, and he's going to play this heady. It's going to be a very tough fight. So I'm actually going to go ahead and challenge this. I'm going to challenge him around the corner, play aggressive, keep that momentum in my favor, and basically slide around the corner. I did slide a little bit, but we're able to hit fire. We track well, and we're able to get that first shot more than anything else. That first shot is so crucial, especially in sweaty lobbies. And because of the TTK, when you combine getting the first shot, using aim to your advantage, and using movement, that's when you start to be able to get these high kill games in these sweaty lobbies. And it really is a lot about getting in a flow kind of of the game 
which is the same for any lobby, right? Confidence equals information plus execution, being able to use aim, your aim and movement to your advantage, as well as getting information up. So we get information, we pop UAV. I notice that there's one over on buy station or one on each buy station, and these players are separated. Could there be somebody ghosted? Of course there could be somebody ghosted, but not totally my concern. We're going to go ahead and challenge this way. And look, he's just buying a bunch of clusters. Not my problem. In every single lobby that there is, there are going to be players that aren't as good. And you know what? Those are the players that I want to challenge consistently in sweaty lobbies. Although we do have to be able to challenge those players that are better. That, you know, are looking and playing aggressive. We're going to challenge this guy over here. Switch to the M4. We're able to get barely get that down. So knowing that I have that information, and I guess the one thing we didn't talk about is when I got that first kill, there was a ghosted player. Boom, right there. So we see this ghosted player right here, right right around the corner, and there's still one on buy station. We are in quads, which I didn't talk about. So we're going to go ahead and stim both for the health boost and the speed boost. We're going to stim again for the speed boost to get around the corner. Now we go ahead and we replay it. Now the moment I'm replayed it, I'm thinking about, okay, how do I get back into this fight? How do I gain control of this fight again? Because they don't really know where I am. So we're going to go ahead and challenge around this corner. Watch the trigger patience here, by the way. I don't shoot there. I don't shoot there. Now I shoot. I finally shoot when I have the advantage and can get enough damage on him to be able to get that down. Now one down below on buy station. Or again, once again, one on each buy station. So we're going to go ahead and challenge this one straight ahead. Now, watch how I get caught in a weird spot here, okay? When I get caught in a weird spot, I'm going to immediately peek back behind cover, and then I'm going to immediately rechallenge. So I get caught in a little bit of attack sprint as I'm pushing here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and shoot a little bit. Boom. I jump behind cover. Now we go ahead and rechallenge, and I use the live ping dynamic from Combat Scout to my advantage to immediately challenge around the corner. This guy's, a, this guy's borderline Houdini. He's able to get away there. He's able to get away the almost. Nope, we're going to catch him from behind. That's where I talk about efficiency and slide canceling. You know, if you, oh, one down pushing right below me. So we're going to go ahead and immediately get out of here. We're once again going to plate up. And notice that we are again low plates, right? We are again not full health here. I can't find plates anywhere. I can't grab plates or I wasn't able to because of the pace of me having to reposition and challenge the next enemy. Um, I don't remember what I was saying before that. I forgot. Oh, slide canceling. If you're the fastest per if you efficiently slide cancel, if you're super quick and you're the fastest person on the map, that means nobody can catch you and you can catch everybody. So that's why slide canceling is so important. A lot of times it's pace of play. Trying to find a plate. Can't even get a plate out of those crates, which more times than not actually do have plates in them. We're able to grab six right there. Trying to see what I can find. Once again, trigger patience. I see the rose skin. I don't challenge just yet. I kind of wait for him to, you know, go ahead and look over this way. He has no cover there. That's the biggest thing is I don't want to let him know that I'm there. And then I'll take advantage of the fact that he has no cover. By the way, we have 15 kills right here, right? You see how they just kind of added up a little bit. Trying to see what I can find. He ends up being in the corner. I get smoked from around the corner. We're going to stim right there. And we're going to go ahead and push up, plate up. Three other teams alive. We don't get circle pull. So we're in a little bit of a weird spot. And I think the mistake that I make here is... I probably should have early rotated. I probably should have early rotated over towards tents and kind of pushed all the way around here, right? I wish I could have the minimap open, but all the way around tents, all the way up this hill and fought for high ground because it's going to end up putting me in a bad spot here. Now, we still execute a little bit. Boom, we're able to get that kill right there. There's two guys who are immediately going to reposition right here. We'll get the thirst. Two down below and one on my level pushing straight across. So I probably should have challenged guys straight across. I actually went for the res. That was a bad play in hindsight I, I that's that's just a really bad play by me not keeping my teammate alive there unfortunately so you know control's not in circle so it, it's not the good play to to uh stay at control and i should have early rotated this actually you know what's interesting i was thinking this now the mistake that i make is not rotating earlier not going far enough around here because i'm gonna get shot from tower and of course there's somebody in tower right why is there not somebody in tower we're gonna have to just keep finessing here which ends up putting me in a bad spot. Now, I don't die here. I do not die right here in this situation. I actually don't die for a little bit, but we're going to challenge this guy, knock hit, or like tag him up a little bit. Then I get shot from the basically right straight behind me. So get shot from top prison. Then there's people over this way. There's people over to my left that you'll see in a second. Actually, I think it's a little bit further on because I'm going to be able to take some people out in control here. And I'm just going to hold these people out of circle. Boom. Tag one up that way. Can't get the down. Unfortunate because of the M4. And that actually is a game changer. I do want to talk about that. Like, that is a game changer right there. And you're going to see why here in a second. So, I'm just going to hold these guys. They've got to push up, right? They've got to either push to my left or push straight up these stairs right here. I'm able to get a kill. Two below me, straight and skinny. And actually, one ghosted over to my left a little bit. So, I'm just going to assume they're all in here. I get the down. I get the thirst. 
one pushing over to the left side and now right there is where i go down but i actually don't get thirsted here so once again we are still fighting for our life right here we're still fighting for our life we're gonna quick stim we're gonna use gas mask i'm gonna have trigger patience and not burn basically and let that guy know where i am we're gonna go ahead and buy my teammate back come on there we go we're gonna buy my teammate back we're gonna push to get to cover this was a mistake right here because i should have used a stim before throwing that so i should have waited another stim then thrown my munitions box then i would have had two stims so let's just learn from that real quick so i'm gonna go ahead and push up here i've got got players to my left so i'm in circle i know they're pushing up as well we're able to get that down i check that real quick i get shot from my left again so i can't worry about the thirst i have no plates i am right here in this situation we've got 47 bullets I ran right by an armor box. I ran right by an armor box. I just saw that for the first time here, which is super unfortunate. That had to be an armor box, right? 100% it was. I win this game if I... Oh, no, it's deployable cover. Okay, that makes me feel good. I thought it was an armor box for sure. It wasn't. Because as I push up here, there's going to be somebody late rotating from gas. He's going to end up taking me out. Really good play. He challenges. And then instead of hopping the wall, he actually takes the opening right here. So notice how there's an opening in the wall right here. Instead of trying to mantle the wall and then challenge me that way, he's going to play this opening, which is a really smart play by him. So I hope you found today's video helpful. As I always say, let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.